how to be happy using the most effective concept of three gunas. These three gunas have been mentioned in Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, Ayurveda and Yoga too. What are these gunas and how to balance them? All these will be mentioned in today's video. Mr. Naresh, who is actually a life coach, he'll be telling us about these gunas and how to balance them. So do watch the video. The third state is actually the highest state. The third gunas, how to get there. Once you're there, you'll get eternal happiness. Want to get there? Watch the video now. Okay, hi Naresh. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm being good, God. Okay, let's get into the topic. Uh, I have a question, uh, which uh, not only me, a lot of them have the same question. Um, may I you. ask you um, how to be happy? I generally follow a lot of advice given by the Vedas, which also is used a lot in the Ayurvedic sciences of today. Now, this question, if I'm not mistaken, you had asked me on a phone call a few days ago, gunas. What is a gun? What are gunas? But so gunas is a term, actually a Vedic Sanskrit term, okay. which you know is also used a lot in Ayurveda. Gunam is singular. Gunas is plural. Gunas basically means qualities. Okay. Now, you must have come across in your life. There are a few very generous people, that's a good quality. Or there are a few very warm-hearted people with a lot of empathy, that's a good quality. That means we say they're good gunams, like, you know, kind-hearted, warm-hearted, generous, you know, courteous, forever courteous. So, even in the Ayurvedic science, they have three fundamental gunas, which they say has to be followed and balanced. Okay. To reach a particular level of so-called, not only immunization of the body, but even mind and soul. So when there's a balance in the gunas, these three gunas that I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes, you find those people actually, you know, which you must have come across, maybe one in a thousand, but you come across such people who are always calm, who are always smiling. They never get perturbed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how they do that. Like, like, you know, there has been a calamity, there has been an earthquake, there has been a flood, there has been shortage of food. And the guy just smiles and says, this too shall pass. He is not disturbed at all. Now, the basic gunas, let's talk about the basic three gunas or the three phases or the three qualities which Ayurvedic science, you can say, pay a lot of attention on. The first one is called tamas. Now, when there is an imbalance of tamas in a human system, those type of people generally tend to be lazy, filled with doubts, impatient, disinterested, maybe a little more serious Cases of these uh, imbalanced tamas is like depression, suicidal tendencies. Now you might ask me, how does a person balance such a situation? Or how does he balance this guna called tamas? Very simple. Food. Okay. Try to be vegetarian as far as possible. Okay. Out of 21 meals in a week, try to have at least 15, 17 meals in a week with a vegetarian platter and try to eat the regular healthy food, not the junk food. It plays a lot with the mind. Why did you write out today? Or I'm asking you, write out. No, no today I, I, and tomorrow, have burgers, have pizza, etc. for dinner. Uh -huh. And call me up tomorrow morning and tell me how do you feel first thing in the morning. Okay. You will not be cheerful. You will not be energetic. You will, it, it, not that your physical body lacks anything. It's the mind. It's not fresh. It's not, you know, ready for accepting that it's a beautiful new day. 
No, as far as possible. I'm not saying it is impossible, but nor am I saying don't try it. Okay. Vegetarian, good, normal food, no junk food. The next level is the rajas. When the rajas is not in balance, people get restless. They have a you know a loss of focus. Like maybe I'll even ask you to watch a movie, and then after about ten to ten minutes, you're playing with your mobile phone. Yeah. What happened is just a movie going on, but the focus is not there, or maybe you know indecisiveness. They find it difficult to take decisions. You find them aggressive. You find them in an angry mode. Perpetually, like you know, anything snaps them. Like short-tempered. You may call them short-tempered people. But you might wonder why. What great stuff happened? Okay, by mistake, a person was passing by you, or you know, a family member of yours spilled some water on you, and there's a great possibility of a great number of people who go raging, hopping mad. That they think it's done, you know, with the wrong intention. It wasn't. It was a mistake. Smile, like what which happened. Now the cure for this exercise. Okay. It's there in every day's, every man's, every woman's so-called capacity. And when I mean exercise, I don't mean the daily morning routine or the daily evening routine. That's good, very good. Please do it. It makes you cheerful. It's a very good stress buster. Exercise at a period of you know, like forty-five minutes, one hour. But. When I mean exercise, you know, we humans actually are not made to just be sitting in a chair, facing a computer, looking at a tabletop for seven hours, eight hours in a day. If you go from the beginning of mankind till maybe about fifty, seventy years ago, people used to walk a lot. They used to commute means walk. Earlier than that, even to get food, they used to go for a hunt. They used to run, walk, crawl. In short, physical action or physical motion of the body goes on. But in today's world, okay, the trains have come out, the you know tubes have come out, cars have come out, the bikes have come out. So it is well recommended that if you have got a desk job, at least every half an hour, forty-five minutes. Get out of your chair. Get out of your desk. Walk around your office. Walk around your wherever your workspaces for five ten minutes, and then sit back. Take a break every ten, you know, every half an hour, forty five minutes. And the final, uh, you can say, phase according to Ayurvedic science, that if a person's tamas and rajas are in balance. They reach the stage called the sattva stage. This is the uh, higher state of the the other two. Highest, yeah, one of the higher stage. That is where it becomes easy to focus. You know, there gets more. You know, there's more harmony around you. When I mean harmony around you, that means there has been a fantastic anger management going on. There's a very you know a, le- a good level of empathy going on. You become more understanding to the situation around you. Everything is not you, 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 or me, me, me. Everything is actually like you know us, and you become more patient. And in this stage, it becomes very, very easy to meditate. Meditation. We'll talk about it in another chapter when we have a discussion. And even just now, what we spoke about these three gunas, that is the you know tamas, rajas. Sattva. See, this is not built overnight. Keep doing it, and you will notice a subtle change if you are that sensitive. On one fine morning, maybe you'll notice the drastic change in you. But it has been happening progressively, step by step. Okay. So, if you know, at the moment, our friends could follow just these basic principles what we have discussed today, and these tips that we have discussed today. I'm certain it will be very helpful for them because good health is something which a lot of people actually take for granted.
Oh, for the three gunas, one is uh, Tamash, Rajas, and uh, Satwa, right? Well, yes. Yeah. So we have to balance all these three. So for Tamash to balance it, we have to actually, you know, cut down our meat intake. For the Rajas, yes. we actually exercise. For the sadhwa is you're already in a better state, so you can we be able to meditate. So if we do all these three, yes. you'll be able to balance. Yes. And when you reach the you know, sadhwa stage, you're again in a level of happiness. Mm. Okay. The harmony, the peace. Yeah, so when you reach the sadhwa stage, you know, whatever the situation, whatever the external factors, it will not uh, affect the person. The person will be able to maintain yes. happiness. You know, you will it will become more like you might come across even this category of people you know who when there is a when there's a problem their first response i'm telling you not reaction their first response okay this is the problem what's the solution but there are many many people majority of them this is the problem how it happened who did it why did it go wrong who disobeyed orders <laughs> you see, they are not interested in the post-mortem. The milk has been spilled. Now find a solution. How do you fill up the glass again? That is where you start to progress in life. Rather than doing a post-mortem, how did the milk fall? How much milk fell? Mm. Do you know how much money was spent? Do you know how much effort had gone? It's happened. Agreed. You can be concerned that this mistake should not be repeated again. For that, find out more specific details as to how did the slip happen or how did the spill happen. But your major focus at that given period is a solution. Now, when you're in the sattva state, that's how your mind works. And then you don't call a problem a problem. You just say, I'm in a situation. Because you know this too will pass. Hmm. It's a question of time. Maybe two, three hours, maybe two, three days, maybe two, three weeks, but it will pass. So you see the whole outlook, the whole approach towards everything around us changes into a more receptive outlook. You learn to accept compliments with grace. You don't feel embarrassed, you don't feel shy, you don't get it is, you know, you have put in effort, you have come to a particular stage and, okay, if somebody likes it, they might even ask you that a few years ago to now, I see a very big behavioral change and change for the better. You have become karma, you smile more. Actually, talking of smile, this is another small trick which I would suggest or request everyone to do it. You know, the subconscious mind cannot differentiate between reality and imagination. Okay. Every half an hour, 45 minutes, smile. It may be the silliest reasons. You're looking at the watch, smile. I say, oh, it's like, you know, 2.45, Singapore time. It's going to be 3.45, Hong Kong time. Oh, nice. Just smile. No rhyme or reason. Smile. You see, what happens is you will realize yourself either in a few days or a few weeks or a few months that you have, you can say, amended your subconscious mind. But as I told you, the subconscious mind cannot reason. It cannot differentiate between reality and you can say an imagination or and a smile makes the subconscious mind think you're happy. So let's release some happy, you know, what, what do we call the things like dopamine or whatever it is, into your system, into your body. Yeah. And what will happen after a month, month and a half, that becomes in the habit of yours. Hmm, interesting. But you know, if you see even someone, in a, for example, in a, retail, in a retail store, you'll smile and ask them, could I have this? Could I have that? It, it's, that smile has become a habit of yours and a smile in anyone's face always adds value. People tend to get more receptive towards a smiling face. So this is what I would suggest 
okay. at the moment. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Narish. This is one aspect of how to be happy, and there are so many other aspects. So I will meet you again in the next episode. I look forward to meeting you again. Okay. Thank you so much.